Hi, this is Mato. In this video, I will show you a very beautiful chess game. This is the game between Nigel Short and Jan Timan that was played in Tilburg in 1991. Where is Tilburg? It is the city in the Netherlands. Short had white pieces and he started with e4. Timan played knight to f6. Alehin defense. Black is provoking white to advance pawns with the idea to attack those pawns later. e5, attacking knight. Knight to d5. d4, d6. Knight to f3. And Timan played g6. Another way to continue is bishop to g4. This may be even stronger move. And sometimes black captures pawn on e5. And white would recapture with knight. In our game we have g6. Bishop to c4 attacking knight. Knight to b6. Knight is attacking bishop now. Bishop to b3. Bishop to g7. And... Short played queen to e2. Sometimes in this position knight to g5 is played, attacking on f7. And after e6, queen to f3, and the black would play queen to e7. In our game we have queen to e2. Knight to c6, white castled kingside, and black castled kingside. Now, very important move, h3. That is preventing queen's bishop to come to g4, pinning knight. Knight is important defender of e5 pawn. Also, black has less space, so exchanging bishop for knight would be okay for black. So why then black didn't play bishop to g4 before castling? Let's see why. If bishop to g4 immediately, that would be a mistake. Because then bishop takes on f7, check, and after king takes bishop, knight to g5, check, attacking bishop on g4, after king to g8, queen takes bishop. That's why black castled first. h3, a5, that is a4, so short played a4 himself. Pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn, knight to d4, attacking queen, knight takes knight, and queen takes knight. Queen and bishop are attacking pawn on e5, so rook to e1, and it is black to move, and he played e6. Maybe he was worried about white playing e6, but after e6, his knight can jump now to d5, because immediately it doesn't work. If knight goes to d5, then White would be winning with rook to the one. So we have e6. And now first move that comes to mind is knight to c3. But short played a better move. That is knight to d2. Knight is going to better square. On f3 it will protect the pawn. And later on that knight can jump to g5. Knight to d5 was played. Knight to f3, attacking queen. Queen to c5. And queen to e4. What is the purpose of this move? Well, queen is going to h4. Knight may be coming to g5. Bishop may be coming to h6. Something like that. So black decided to exchange queens. And now, short had to make very important decision here. 
he could have captured knight in order to win the pawn. So this is possible. Bishop takes on d5, pawn takes, queen takes, and bishop to e6. White is a pawn up. But black has bishop pair and a good development. So instead, bishop to c4 was played to avoid exchanging of queens. And that was part of the big plan. Knight to b6, attacking bishop. b3, knight takes bishop, pawn takes knight. If black can reach endgame, he would be fine. He would be perhaps winning because of these pawns problems on the queen side. But short wants to finish the game in the middle game by attacking black king. It is black to move and he played rook to e8. And now excellent move. Rook to d1 that is preventing black from playing bishop to d7. Why then black didn't play bishop to d7 immediately? If bishop to d7 immediately bishop to a3 attacking queen and winning rook. Rook to e8 was played and now rook to d1 queen to c5 queen to h4 b6 so bishop can get in the game bishop to e3 attacking queen queen to c6 keeping an eye on d7 square Another way to continue is queen to f8. Queen to c6 was played. And now bishop to h6. White wants to exchange bishops. Black would have problem on dark squares around the king. So bishop to h8 was played. Uh, what would happen if bishop takes bishop? Then queen takes on h6. And after bishop to b7 rook to d4, rook may be swing to h4. If rook to e7, rook from a to d1, black king is not safe. So we have bishop to h8, rook to d8. If rook takes on d8, queen takes, queen takes, checkmate. So rooks must be connected. And black has two ways, bishop to d7 and bishop to b7. Well, let's check what would happen if bishop goes to d7. If bishop goes to d7, then knight to d4. If queen moves to b7, for example, then rook takes bishop. So probably black would capture rook. And after knight takes on c6, bishop takes knight. That was another way to continue for black. He didn't like to lose his queen though. He played bishop to b7. And he was hoping to maybe give checkmate on g2 if knight moves. Okay, we have a rook from a to d1. Threat is queen to e7. So now black played bishop to g7, rook from 8 to d7, and rook to f8. Why did black play rook to f8? This is why. If, for example, bishop to c8, then white would sacrifice rook on f7. If king takes rook, knight to g5, king to g8, bishop takes bishop, king takes bishop, queen takes on h7 check, king to f8, and queen to f7 checkmate. 
that's why rook to f8. Now short captured bishop on g7, king takes bishop, rook from 1 to d4, rook from 8, rook from a to e8, and queen to f6, check, king to g8. White is better, but how to win? After the game, there was a suggestion that knight to h4 followed by f3 and knight sacrifice on g6 followed by rook to h4 is winning. Something like this. Knight to h4 and say after rook to c8, first f3 protecting g2 from queen. Queen to c5, pinning rook, then king to h2. Next is knight takes pawn on g6. If f pawn takes, that is checkmate, so black would recapture with h pawn. h takes on g6, rook would come to h4, and then there is checkmate on h8. In the game, short continue differently. h4, idea is to play h5, and then h6 and to deliver checkmate on g7 but black stopped the pawn with h5 it is y to move and to play a killer move or should i say to make a killer plan maybe that's better in this position white made a killer plan what would you play in this position if you had white pieces? If you wish, you can pause this video and you can try to find the winning move for white. Ready? This is what short played. King to h2. What is this doing? Okay. Let's see how the game continued. Rook to c8. And now king to g3. Can you see why this move is played? But let's go back. Instead of rook to c8, black would have played bishop to c8. And now this is how short would continue. g4. If bishop takes rook, then pawn takes pawn. If pawn is not captured, then pawn is going to h6 and there is going to be checkmate on g7. So pawn takes pawn. And now check. And after king to h8, check again. And after king to g8, check mate. Hmm. Can black do better in this position? What about pawn takes pawn? If pawn takes pawn, then a knight to g5. If now bishop takes rook, then h5, pawn is coming to h6. If pawn is captured, what else? If pawn is captured, then queen to h6. And there is no way to stop checkmate on h7. In our game, we have rook to c8, king to g3, rook from c to e8, King to f4. What is this? Can you see what white is doing? And now Timan played the bishop to c8. Where is rook going? How would you continue? Well, short already knew what he would do. He played king to g5. Bishop takes rook. King to h6 and black resigned. There is no way to stop this checkmate. Queen to g7, checkmate. What a spectacular game. What a march by white king. And that is all. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. I wish you good luck with your chess. And bye for now.